So yeah, my name is Max Gervitz. Uh, I've been involved in the startup scene in uh, Eastern Europe, Southeastern Europe for the last six or so years. Um, so yeah, regarding you know what, what is what is a better thing to do uh, in this region, uh, or what, what is better to be a venture capital fund manager or an angel, it's very hard to say. Um, I think that both um, both activities don't really exist in their full scope in this region, right? Um, we, we don't have a competitive market, right? So we don't have a market with any history of returns, any history of successes, really. Um, there have been only a, a very a very small amount of um, venture-funded companies from the Balkans that have actually become successful, uh, to such an extent, actually, that um, it, it's still very hard to say that there is, there is a success case. We still haven't actually validated that venture capital um, investments are a worthwhile thing to do in the Balkans. We all feel they are, and you know, looking at theories of convergence, so looking at, at similarities, how other ecosystems develop, there is a very strong case for believing that venture capital uh, investments will make sense uh, in this region, but it's, it's still very, very early. Um, comparing angel work and venture capital work, they, um, they both have their own uh, benefits and their own drawbacks, right? So. The benefit is, I guess, that the benefit of VC fund wall is, you know, you have a fund, you get a salary, so you're, you're actually, you have a job and you're managing uh, money. Uh, the drawback is that when, when you have public backed funds, it's extremely, extremely hard to, um, to operate like a proper venture capital fund because you have the kind of reporting requirements, but also the kind of, um, well, political or policy, if you want, uh, requirements that are very hard to mitigate with what you should be doing market-wise. I mean, theoretically, what you should be doing, if you're running a venture capital fund out in this region, uh, you should be basically investing in some really cool companies in the West, and maybe with the angle of getting some of their tech work outsourcing, let's say, product outsourcing, move to, to this region. This would probably be the best thing. Unfortunately, uh, all of the public-backed funds that we have right now in, uh, in Eastern Europe, they didn't actually allow this. So usually there's a very strict, um, a rule that you can only invest in the companies locally, right? So it's very hard to negotiate, and very very few people have actually managed to make a sense out of this. Um, that's for as far as VC is concerned. When you look at angels, well, the deal with angel investments is that you have a personal connection with the founders usually, right? So the way it works in the Balkans is that usually you have every country has one or two um, angel investors that are kind of experienced in the local market. They know the local market. They've done stuff there. Um, Again, very few people that have actually been very successful. I think that the only person who's been really successful is an angel investor, but it's it's more of a studio approach. Is um, uh, my friend Ravel Georgescu from uh, Romania? He founded several companies. Uh, recently exited his, his his third or fourth company already. Um, a company called Vector Watch, uh, very cool uh, smart smart watch manufacturer. Uh, but, but what that guy does is that like, he basically goes like really deeply into a company. He basically sets it up, runs it, and then you know then gets someone else to buy it. Um, that that's a model that works. Otherwise, I think, hopefully down the line, a couple of years, this kind of work will be, um, will bring profits, but for now it's still very early to say. What we're looking for when we try to fund people, um, you know, it's very strongly um, depends on uh, what, what we're doing as an investor, right? So, um, generally very early stage, right? So when, you know, when we were running the Accelerator program in Bulgaria, um, we would basically just look for how... Um, how ambitious the people were. I think that's actually the only really thing, you know, the only real quality we look at. We would look at how, um, yeah, we would basically try to see if the entrepreneur is ready to kind of outrun themselves, right? Um, by definition, we were mostly investing in people that had no prior entrepreneurship experience. Sometimes they were just really young and very new. Sometimes there were people that had a great corporate career and even a management career behind their backs, but still hadn't really been an entrepreneur. Or sometimes they had been entrepreneurs, but a completely non-startup entrepreneur. Right, so people that ran some kind of small local business. So we would always look at these human qualities, and I think that you know, if you look at how it works in the developed markets, if you look at um, you know accelerators like there's a, there's a few of them that are good actually, but if you look at accelerators like uh, YC, like Alchemist, um, those guys, you know, they, they generally really look at the qualities of um, of the team and the founder team. So I think that's what you do when you run a very early stage program. Obviously, when you deal with angel investments. But also with more mature venture capital investments, you actually look at the probability of the company, um, first of all, the probability of that company and product taking off. Uh, secondly, at the likelihood of your knowledge and your network being 
uh, of benefit to what they're doing, right? So you could, you really, as an investor, you generally always have to bring value. Um, that is also one of the really hard things about being an investor over here is that um, it's just really, really hard to add value to companies in, in Eastern Europe because what is needed, I mean, if you look at how venture capital funds work in, uh, you know, in the US, in England, and other developed markets, you see that um, funds usually help recruit and help pay for recruiting uh, key staff, right? And it's usually key business development staff, uh, what funds focus on. Uh, this, is, this is very hard to do again in Eastern Europe because there is very little, uh, very little such talent here and it's very hard for an investor to be that bridge to talent which actually exists in a, in a very different geography. Oh, 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 oh,